Praise be to God. Amen. Welcome, everybody. Today's topic shall be about Satan and helping you understand who this person is. According to Rabbi Tavia Singer, Satan is God's friend. And as we go through Scripture today, looking at all the evidence inside of the Scripture in the Torah and the Tanakh of the Talmud, that you will see that Satan absolutely couldn't be further from anything that resembles a friend to anybody, no, especially to God, okay? <clears throat> Beginning with the song, The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies, they'll never come to an end. They are new every morning, and new every morning, and great is thy faithfulness, O Lord, and great is thy faithfulness. Amen. I want to sing more, but I haven't got time. Okay, so <clears throat> before we start, when you go through the scripture, like Ezekiel's vision, he had a vision that he was walking through water, and the water was just up to the ankles. Then he was walking through water, and it came to his knees, and his waist, and his shoulders, then above his head. And so too, the scriptures like that. It can be very shallow, but you can go deeper and deeper and deeper until the water of God's knowledge is like a flood over your head, okay? So we're going to attempt today to go deep under water as we begin to find out from the scripture who Satan's friend, but the rabbi, Tobi Singer, I believe has stayed ankle deep when explaining to people the mysteries concerning Satan. So we are going to go very deep today and ex explaining to you who exactly Satan is. Now, even according to the, the scripture um, and the, the Talmud, it states that, that the teachings of the Messiah to come in the Talmud, Kohelas 11 verse 8, shall make the teaching that we have now about Satan meaningless. Okay, so the mystery about who Satan is, according to the Talmud, lies in the person of the Mashiach. In Vayikra Rabbah um, 13 verse 3, balancing with Isaiah 51 4, it says, a new Torah teaching shall come from the Mashiach. So he'll be the one explaining to you things about Satan that you couldn't understand clearly inside of your Torah. Now it's not that it's not there, it is. But like Ezekiel's vision, except you can go deep underwater, you'll miss it, okay? If you stay like Rabbi Tobi Singer, only ankle deep, then you're going to miss the deep mysteries concerning Satan that the Mashiach um, holds with him. This is why when Jesus came inside of the New Testament, different than the Hebrew Bible, you have far more things said about Satan. Why? Because according to the Talmud, according to the Torah, that the nations await the teachings of the Mashiach. I am Isaiah 11, verses 1 and 2, and I am Isaiah 9, verse 6. He shall be called the Wonderful Counselor, and upon him shall be the Spirit of Wisdom. This is why the New Testament, the Christian Bible, has more things concerning Satan than the Hebrew Bible, but today we're going to go into the Hebrew Bible, okay, and not the Christian Bible to find out exactly who Satan is, praise God. So, onto this first section, that the basis uh, that Rabbi um, Singer will say that um, Satan could only be helping um, and aiding God is because only man has been given free will to sin. And I am a Jewish brother, Avner, who 
commented to me on his note says, only man has free will. Angels are like robots, okay? Now, so what we'll do now is we'll look at the scripture of the Torah. First of all, let's look at um, Genesis chapter 3, verse 14 and 15. We see the serpent, it said, was more cunning than any of the beasts of the field. And he now tempts Eve. And because of it, God, watch this, punishes the serpent for sinning, doing wrong. So it's not just man that has free will to sin. There we have the serpent sinning right at the beginning of the Torah and being punished with man for his sin. So the serpent was treated equal with man for sinning and doing wrong. Okay, and not only that, in Genesis 3.15, you see that the serpent is going to continue to do wrong. Okay, and continue to be judged and punished for doing wrong, which you see in Jeremiah 27, verse 1 and 2, for I will judge, I'm going to judge that serpent. So it continues to do wrong, even to when the Mashiach comes, because God says that that uh, the seed of the woman, which is the Mashiach, shall trample upon the head of the serpent, and the serpent will bruise his heel. Again, the desire to still do wrong. So, there you go. That's the first scripture that points to not only man has free will to do wrong. Okay, so let also um, look at um, Ezekiel chapter 38. You see there from uh, verses uh, um, 14, 13 all the way to 18, we see God describes this one great cherub. Now, not even Gabriel it's called great. Remember that. This great cherub angel, okay, that was perfect in power and in wisdom and in beauty until, watch this, sin, sin and wrongdoing was found inside of that great angel that God causes that angel to fall. He said, to destroy and I destroyed that angel. So there we see this angel, this great angel, greater than Gabriel, has done wrong. So much wrong that in, in Job chapter 15, verse 15, God says that he cannot now trust the angels. And because of it, the heavens are not pure. So do you see something bad has happened that has affected, praise God, the heavens and that God can not trust the angel. Doesn't sound like robots to me and it sounds very much so that the angels have free will to sin. And of course, in Jewish literature, inside of the Zohar, okay, um, in uh, volume 2, and also in Vertebrate Balm, in Noach um, 33, and in the Talmud, you have references to angels being envious and falling from heaven. And that's so outside of the scripture. So you have inside of the Bible, we see, to begin with, the serpent and this great angel are the ones that seem to do very much wrong okay balance with comments on the town mood so you see rabbi singer and other jewish beliefs is wrong that not only man has free will to sin so there we have looking at we're left with a picture in the bible with a great angel affecting the whole heavens and a serpent now on earth uh, be punished for wrongdoing, which is both the same person. For remember, God says that he destroyed the great angel and it now with a fall. So it falls. What happens when you fall from heaven? You come down to earth. And now you've been destroyed. Your angel's wings have been taken away and you have now the body likened unto a cunning serpent. 
okay? Or like a beast, it says, more cunning than the beast of the field. But this angel continues to fall. Why? Because God has cast it down. God cast you down. Me, you're going to fall a long way. And it keeps falling until even the serpent loses its legs and crawls on the belly. So there we have a tremendous fall from being the great angel with the greatest job in heaven falling, loses its wings, now becomes a cunning beast serpent, and then loses even its legs. So you have from wings to legs, both gone, and now on the belly. You cannot fall worse than, you call rags to riches, this is angel wings to belly, to crawling on the belly, which is one and the same as the great angel rebelled in heaven against God. Now it's fallen to a low status and it's rebelling on earth to God as to judge the serpent uh, once again for now doing wrong. So that's the only two. You have one event of rebellion in heaven and one event of a creature on earth other than man rebelling, which is both the same person, which is Satan. The same person that continues throughout the scripture. God, even in Zechariah 3 verse 3, has to rebuke Satan um, for trying to destroy Joshua for no cause. Again, wrong doing. Even God in Job has to remind Satan, don't take his life. Why? Because the desire to kill and to bring death in, which is beyond testing. Praise be to God. So there we have, lined out in the scripture, Satan and Serpent is the two enemies in the Bible that does wrong and sins, combining together to be the Satan, which is the one enemy in heaven and on earth. So then we go to the battle in the heavens, second part. We see in Daniel chapters 10, if you go to verse 13 and 20 to 22, you find um, um, Gabriel has visited Daniel, who's been fasting and praying 21 days. And De De um, Gabriel says to Daniel, we heard your prayer 21 days ago, uh, and, and but we could not answer it because the princes of Persia and with Greece withstood me. And if Michael, um, the archangel, was not there to help me, he was the only one there to help me. Other than Michael, I had no help. And if Michael wasn't there to help me, him, I would and could not have coped. Now this is very strange because if you turn in your Bible to um, 2 Samuel chapter 24, you see God says one angel, just one, and this one angel kills 70,000 men so quickly that even God has to stop the angel because the one angel would have destroyed the whole of Jerusalem. So how is it that here in Daniel chapter 10, that, that, that if it's men, the princes of Persia and Greece, that they are managing to withstand the angel Gabriel. And if it wasn't because of Michael, that Gabriel could not have won. It doesn't make sense, except the princes that he's talking about, because it never mentions man's name, are heavenly princes, battles that are going on in the heavens, just as we see the angel in Ezekiel 20 falling from heaven, we see a battle in the heavens, which are heavenly princes, not earthly princes, which it wouldn't make sense if it was man in light of the scripture at all. Now remember, um, the reason why the battles would be so hard, because remember, this angel himself was called by the Almighty God, Great. And remember, not even Gabriel is called Great, which would make the wrestling, just like Jacob wrestled with the angel all the way 
till dawn. This angel is so great that it needs all the strength of Michael and Gabriel together for 21 days. Not one whole night, which Gabriel and the angel wrestled. Here we have 21 days until now they prevail. They can now meet and answer the prayers of Daniel. So there you see again, there is forces uh, that are contrary to um, the good angels, which we see the battle uh, in the heavens uh, with Gabriel and Michael fighting against uh, Satan, that great bad angel that rebelled against God in Ezekiel 28. Praise God. So here we have the second major scripture showing us uh, that um, this angel was a force against God and not his friend. In Isaiah 14, we have, which many rabbis think it's talking about Nebuchadnezzar and who is Lucifer, the son of the morning. It is not Satan. But if you, because they'll look at the first verses in chapter 14 of Isaiah, where it says, take up a parable about the king of Babylon. Now remember in Daniel chapter 10, that the princes there are heavenly princes, okay? Which, re re why they receive no human name. Now again, here, it never mentions the name Nebuchadnezzar, just the king of Babylon. And we'll see when we go through Isaiah 14, that it's got to be a heavenly king, just like Nebuchadnezzar was the king of kings. This king of Babylon is also the king of kings of fallen angels in the heaven because the things that Isaiah 14 talks about does not fit a human Nebuchadnezzar at all. It would be impossible to be a man. And we're brought straight in in verses 13 and 14 of Isaiah 14. It goes, uh, um, how great, O Lucifer, <coughs> son of the morning, how hard great is your fall from the heaven. So again, we're brought uh, and back to Daniel chapter 10, where there's a war in the heavens. This is something that took place in the heavens. This person lived in the heavens. Just like Elijah went up to heaven, Enoch went up to heaven. This person fell from the heavens again, must be an angel. And it says he wanted to be so confident he is that he believed he would be like God himself. That's why I said to you why Michael and Gabriel has to struggle for so long, just like Jacob did the angel. They are 21 days wrestling with this angel. Why? Because he was so powerful, his pride made him think his power was equal to that of God. This is why the battle and the wrestling between Michael and Gabriel is so fierce. Again, not a friend of God at all, which of course Rabbi Singer leaves all these scriptures out. Now we continue to go down. It describes this person, um, the king of Babylon. It says in verse 7 of Isaiah 14 uh, that at this person's uh, death, death judgment, all the earth shall be at peace and with joy. Well, when Nebuchadnezzar died, all the earth was not at peace and with joy. There's never been a time since the fall of Adam that any one man has died that the whole earth went into a state of rejoicing and peace and rest. This is kept not until the coming of the Messiah, which all Jews know. So this could not be Nebuchadnezzar. In fact, it says that when this king of Babylon is judged, it says this, uh, that all the kings and all the chief men that have been and gone to hell in the netherworld shall rise up and speak against him. Imagine, that means Every person from Adam that died uh, 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 will rise up to speak against this king of Babylon who 
was responsible for them going there. How could that be Nebuchadnezzar? Uh, he wasn't there in Adam's time. He wasn't there in David's time. He wasn't there in this time today causing havoc in the world. That is that great cherub in Ezekiel 28 that fell down, down into the form of a serpent and begin to rebel and seek man's downfall. That could only fit into the category of Satan, that great cherub, that fall. And to finish with, how could God be speaking about Nebuchadnezzar in this terrible way that all the earth and hell shall rejoice at his judgment when in Daniel chapter 4 Nebuchadnezzar repented. Not only repented, he received blessings from God upon his kingdom to be more blessed than it was before because his repentance was so genuine. God in Ezekiel chapter 18 says when the wicked man turns and repents, God will remember his wickedness no more. God could not speak against him in that way because now he's termed as righteousness because of his repentance. This could only fit in with somebody who refused to repent, who thinks they are equal to God. And it said in Isaiah 14 verse 13 that he believes he could ascend above all the stars of God, which is man. Remember God said to Abraham, I will make your descendants as the stars of heaven. This angel wants to be greater than man. And how much greater than that? And seeking to destroy every king and man that was on the earth. Which is why in Isaiah it says, All of hell, all of the dead rise up to speak against this person. Does not fit into Nebuchadnezzar's repentance at all. Now all of these Facts, Rabbi Tovia Singer leaves out when he's talking about Satan. You need to understand all of these. Go deep into the waters of Ezekiel to understand who Satan is. Then we're left with the final question. Why does God use Satan in this way? This is why Rabbi Singer believes he, that Satan is a friend of God because in 1 Chronicles 21 um, and in 2 Samuel 24, in the first verse of each of these scriptures, it says in 1 Chronicles 21, 1, that, that the, the anger of God came up against Israel. And in 2 Samuel 24, verse 1, it says that Satan came up against Israel, putting them both on an equal par, showing you that Satan is working with God. But the question we have to ask is why does God do that? God allows Satan to do his work for him. Now remember in Ezekiel 20 that this angel believes he is equal to the Most High. Isaiah 14 verses 14. The pride of his heart. So God now is giving him okay, his anger to look like he is like God, but it's his downfall. If you turn in Jeremiah 27, verse 5 to 9, God uses Babylon. Again, in Isaiah um, um, 51, um, Jeremiah 51, sorry, verses 1 and 7, you find God rejoices to use Babylon. But then when you go to verse 24, it says that afterwards, God now will destroy Babylon. So he uses Babylon um, to execute his judgment. But then um, Jeremiah 51 verse 24, then at the end turns against Babylon. Why? Because of their pride of their heart. Just like Satan, just like that great angel, he gives him the, 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 the wrath and the anger of God to match the pride which he wanted. I am like God, which is why the battle with Gabriel and Michael is so difficult against this Satan great angel. And you find the same thing in Daniel chapter 11, verses 36, that the beast 
God gives him his fury. He says, and um, the beast will overpower all of his will until God's fury is accomplished. Once God's fury is accomplished, then God turns his anger and destroys the beast. Why? Because the beast was prideful like Satan. Uh, the Philistines were prideful like Satan. Esau's descendants were prideful like Satan. So God uses them to execute his wrath. But because of their pride, wanting to be exalted like God, God now turns and destroys them, which is exactly what he'll do with Satan. Uses him to execute his wrath, which you see, 1 Chronicles 21, 1, 2 Samuel 24, verse 1. But to the end, uh, God will completely destroy. That's why it says in Jeremiah 27, verse 1, For I will, at the end, destroy that serpent, the one, the angel that fall all the way down to his belly. This is the reason not that Satan is God's friend. How could a reputable rabbi like Rabbi Tovia Singer read Ezekiel and Isaiah and Daniel and Genesis and it come up with the conclusion that Satan is God's friend just because God uses him. When all these examples show that God does that many times when he seeks now to destroy the person like Zechariah 1.15. I was angry with Israel only a little, but you have gone too far. And you see Satan repeatedly. God has to hold him back from wanting to destroy Job, which he has done according to the Talmud. God, um, Satan, Rabbi Nachman, uh, states that he's the evil one who sought to destroy all the righteous of the earth. Rashi, in his commentary on Job 9.6, says he is Satan, the wicked one. How could Rabbi Tavia Singer, it is inconceivable to come up after washing in the water of all these beautiful scriptures that Satan is a friend of God. Oh my goodness, it is absolutely, sorry, ridiculous. Well, praise be to God. I hope you've enjoyed the journey. I just encourage you, please, don't, like Ezekiel, just walk ankle deep into God's Word. You need to, with faith, please have the courage to step into deeper waters, uh, right up to your head and over your head, and immersion under the deep mysteries of God's Holy Scripture. And, and if you don't, you'll come up with the ridiculous things like Satan is a friend of God. So we've gone on this beautiful journey and we've seen uh, that um, not only man has the ability to sin, but, uh, but angels in heaven, okay, all the way down to the serpent, have done terrible wrongs and have been judged terribly and will be judged terribly, causing a tremendous, difficult war in heaven that even Michael and Gabriel have to struggle against to win with the reasons why God uses Satan and the way he does not because he's his friend, like Rabbi Tove Singer sadly says, but because his heart is lifted up in pride and God shares the thing that he thinks he is, but only like all the nations, like the Babylon and the Syria, uh, uh, they too, after God using them uh, to execute his wrath, like the beast in Daniel chapter 11, 36 to the end, God turns and destroys them, which you see in Jeremiah 27 to the end. God turns, like it says in Isaiah 14, that all the men and the kings that have ever been inside of hell rise up at the judgment of this person that fell from the heavens, which could be none other than 
Satan. What a joy to be. So there's no need. A lot of people are afraid to go in the deep waters of Ezekiel. You know why? Because they think they'll drown. But just trust inside of God. And it's a beautiful experience to be in deep waters and to be able to swim. And that's what Jesus did when he came. He opened up uh, uh, um, pushed the stone that was at the well's mouth uh, and uh, opened up the water of God's deeper revelations about who Satan is. No longer exposed. What the angel Gabriel and Michael find difficult to do, the Mashiach, Yeshua, has come. And like it says in Genesis 3.15, God said, the seed of the woman shall bruise the serpent's head, brought him out from the hiding place, exposed him for not being the friend of God, and neither your friend. Praise God!